I'm happy to be here. Uh, thanks for invitation. My topic today is transfer effect of snatch variation. I'd like to say that I'm a big Olympic weightlifting lover. Uh, and uh, first of all, I'm not native speaker. I'm from Ukraine. That is why if I will spell something incorrectly, it will not be clear. Please put your question in the chat. In the dark past, I'm pro weightlifter. I was a national team member, now only a recreational weightlifter, but still lifting three, four times per week. And I love very much. Also, I'm I'm a little bit in science and PhD, still use it as a part of my work and from time to time doing some researches. I will speak a little bit about this today as well. My main job now, I'm working together with my buddy, Alexei Tarakti, worldwide known weight leap. And we do seminars and also we do a lot of online work to develop Olympic weightlifting because this is what we love to do. We will speak briefly about history of this question, what's going on now and uh, why there is a power and hang snatch in the agenda. You will hear about this during my presentation. Also, I would like to invite all of you to share information about this lecture. Feel free to do pictures, feel free to do uh, stories. You're very welcome. Uh, first of all, let's say that uh, the researching and studying the question of relation about the uh, accessory exercises in weightlifting, it started in 1970s and Bulgarian coaches were first who did it from practical perspective. And then in the 80s, uh, Ukrainian and Soviet coach and scientist Nikolai Laputin with his PhD student Valentin Oleshko, who now is professor and well-known scientist in the world, they did big research. It was Valentin Oleshko's PhD work and dissertation. And after this, they released a very famous book, well-known in the United States, for example, which is called Management of the training process of elite weightlifters. And this is, was the uh, scientific fundamental beginning of studying of this question. They mm, assumed that uh, assistant exercises are always, mostly always part of the training process of uh, weightlifters of all levels. And they assumed that uh, it's not the best way to check preparedness of weightlifters daily by using only snatch and clean and jerk because it could be exhausting and can provoke a lot of injury. And that is why the practice showed them that accessory exercises could be a good tool to analyze the level and the quality of training process because uh, accessory exercises are sufficiently similar in execution to the competition in the lifts. And it's, it needed to say that Aleshka repeatedly did those uh, testing through the years from 90s and uh, till now. And uh, recently we did also uh, small research, but before I would like to say some screenshot from his dissertation, it was like this in the 80s. So he did analysis through the all 10 weightlift, male weightlifting categories, and he analyzed 14 exercises. And what he found in 90s, it's just a few numbers that became very like well known. Most coaches use this model that, for example, power snatch is supposed to be around 80% of the competition snatch and also the numbers about the achievement in front and back squat. This is relation between best clean and jerk and uh, front and back squat. It also became as a model numbers that a lot of coaches use to understand if we have lack of strength or we need to develop technical side of the clean and jerk. Anyway, uh, those numbers exist already for years. But as I said, weightlifting is developing. We had some waves of developing in Olympic weightlifting due to weight classes changing. Female Olympic weightlifting started to develop. Now we had during the last 15, 20 years, some uh, restriction about the drug testing. So we assume that the training process uh, changed. Also, there is some development in, te in technique. There is some development in methodology. That is why recently we did also one more uh, research like this with the team of my colleagues, including Gergo, a scientist from the United States, William Hornsby and uh, Christopher Tabor and Valentina Leshka as well. We collected a lot of data. I personally collected data at the last Europeans in Armenia. What we found that actually numbers are more or less stable. 
the only uh, number that is changing it was in the relation between competition snatch and power snatch because now we can see that now it's something around 84 87 and it means that uh, technical side of the execution is uh, developing because uh, athletes uh, can lift more in this exercise and also we found the difference between achievement in overhead squad be between male and uh, female athletes and also it could be uh, explained because of the physiological differences of the upper limbs uh, strengths. Also when we did correlation analysis we found that very high correlation uh, exists between competition snatch and two very famous exercises. It's a power snatch and hang snatch. Another snatch exercises, they also had a kind of high correlation, but the highest one is between these two. That is why we decided to focus and uh, do some analysis about these exercises and to speak about them today a little bit more. And what is more interesting, if we will analyze these three categories of Olympic weightlifters that we can see now on the picture, usually when we work with the beginners and when we teach progression usually first snatch related exercise that beginner will execute will be a power snatch i would say it will be high hang power snatch because this is the easiest progression which look like a snatch and i believe the second exercise that beginners will execute will be hang snatch because most progression that we do with our beginners it starts with standing position and then at least go slowly to the initial starting position and execute the snatch and what is way more interesting that when we ask the question to elite athletes uh, we found that the higher level of elite athletes level is the less exercise actually they use in the training program when i ask the question tell me your best result in your block snatch or in your overhead squat. A lot of athletes, they told me, I don't do this. So most of athletes, even on the highest level, they use in the program hang snatch. A lot of athletes, but not all, use power snatch. And uh, most of them avoid exercise such as overhead squat or block snatch. Uh, some of them use, but not too much. And uh, if we will take a... Uh, uh, look at the competitive picture of crossfits if we will take a look at the competition we will found, find that a lot of them really use power snatch they love power snatch and in the uh, competition program they use a lot of hang snatch but you will never find in the workout of the day for example block snatch or deficit snatch something like this that is why researching these two that i mentioned also makes some sense so let's now speak more about the exercise number one called power uh, snatch this is how it looks actually and the video presentation is uh, done by Alexei Tarakti, and I will just show you slowly. I'm sure you know what is the power snatch, but maybe some people will realize that what they did all the time, it's a not actually a snatch, it's a power snatch because it happens very often in the uh, it happens very often in CrossFit. What I would like to say, uh, first of all, uh, power snatch is a must-have exercise 100% for beginner, novice athlete, and intermediate. Why? Because uh, it's uh, good for working on extension phase. And if we will take a look at the statistics of the common mistake, not full extension, it's a very common problem. Also, as we spoke before, it has uh, reduced turnover technical demands. So for beginners, it's easier. And when we want to focus on specific power position, maybe uh, to work in the power snatch, it will be better than in the full squat snatch because it will be more uh, difficult from the coordination perspective. And uh, what we know from the practice that usually uh, we work in the power snatch in the intensity zone from 60 to 75 percent of, of one rm that is why it makes sense that it's perfect for power speed training and uh it's also one of the benefits of the power snatch and one more statement that i mentioned here it can be beneficial for athletic performance training in other sports for example what i know from my practice martial art wrestling they use a lot of variations of power snatch the most comfortable is the power snatch from mid-thigh 
level and there are a lot of researches uh, especially in american football which say that mid-tie olympic weightlifting variation are very useful for developing uh, power and all things that related to the athletic position power production but also what we need to remember that there is not only benefits but also drawbacks of the power snatch and uh, i believe that we should always keep in mind that power snatch it's not the way we do competition snatch it's a tool to develop things that i already mentioned extension phase speed power and so on and so on because uh, what we what we know from the practice that big volume in power in power exercises i mean power snatch and power clean will definitely provoke inflammation of the ligaments and tendons especially in the knees joints that is why we should be accurate with the volume of these exercises this is my opinion the next exercise that i would like to pay your attention it's a hang snatch a little bit later, I will speak about the variation of power snatch as well. But first, let's speak about the exercises itself. So what we know that hang snatch is a variation of a classical snatch that begins with the barbell when we held in the lifter's hands uh, rather than uh, starting from the ground. And depending on the goals, we can use different hang position. It could be lift off position, below the knee, knee level, above the knee, mid thigh, high hang snatch, depending what is the goal. I would recommend from my coaching practice and uh, from my athlete, athlete, athletical training practice to use straps all the time you do hang snatches because as soon as we start to hold bar in our arms longer than we used to do our forearms and biceps became tight and it doesn't look like a proper snatch and because the bar will not be flying so it's a just small advice so benefits hang snatch must have drill for all level of athletes i already spoke about this i love the benefit of the hang snatch because it naturally increases time under tension because we need time to grab the bar, stand straight, then descend, take the starting position and lift and then repeat it and uh, repeat. And what we know from the basic sign that eccentric mode of working of our muscle when we move down and stretch our muscles will definitely enhance motor coordination. And this is a big benefit of hang snatch because controlling barbell through the eccentric phase requires uh, those improving uh, motor coordination. Also eccentric mode will provide better stability. I mean, uh, joint and muscle stability and uh, eccentric mode will definitely overload the muscles way more than just a concentric phase. And uh, that is why this is especially must have exercise in preparation period if we speak about competition preparation. Eccentric mode also beneficial for tendon health if we use it smart and potentially reduce risk of the tendon injury if we use the hang snatch with the smart volume. Two more points that I would like to outline. If we have any troubles in the first and the second pool, hang snatch, because we can isolate specific uh, phases, uh, help uh, to concentrate and improve our technique in specific uh, position and also improve speed and timing as well. And well-known fact about hang snatch that it develops turnover phase because it encourages quick transition from the pool to get getting under the bar and uh, helping to develop speed and agility and those two qualities are definitely crucial for successful catch for the full snatch but also i would like to say about the drawback about hang snatch and here uh, there is a small joke about bulgarian lifter whose name is carlos nazar he is world champion and european champion and clean and jack record holder so his competition snatch is a little bit more than 170 and what i know from his interview that his uh training hang snatch is 190 kilos same uh things we know about uh, simon martirasan from armenia who did maybe three or four years ago hang snatch from the mid tie level uh, 210 and uh, now his body weight 
10 kilos more, but his snatch is uh, still uh, 200 kilos. So it means that hang uh, snatch is not answer for all question. And if your hang snatch is way more than competition snatch, maybe you should focus on a little bit different tools. Uh, and also we should keep in mind that drawback of the hang snatch is a very long recovery because big muscle of overload in the eccentric phase will require way more time to recover and from my own uh, memories uh, of uh, training the national team when we had during the week one hang snatch and one hang clean everybody were dead like for five days we should remember that big volume uh, inappropriate big volume and hang snatch will definitely provoke a risk of injury in a lower back now i would like to speak about uh, power snatch variation and complexes and later on i will do the same about the hang snatch so there is a uh, nine different variation i would like to speak about each briefly i think that first one is a very familiar to everyone when we do even a classical snatch and when we warm up for big weights usually co coach emphasize that let's do first rep power snatch just to pay attention on extension phase and during the volume stage training uh, what i remember from my uh, memories when we had triples coach always asked us to do uh, example number two, when I did full squat snatch, then power snatch, then again full squat snatch, very good complex for coordination and setting up the movement. For example, in the recovery week when uh, we don't want to work in the full uh, range of motion, it's a good option to work in the lower weight uh, complex number three, like power snatch and hang power snatch about the knee. I love this very much because it helped to focus on the power position and uh, quality catch in the overhead position. Classical approach, power snatch and uh, squat snatch, number four for coordination. Number five, it's uh, one of the best tools for beginners when they still have a pro problem in turnover in the deep squat position. That is why first we emphasize on the good extension. And then if they can, they can do snatch balance. If they still can, they can do overhead squat. And this is, will speed up the education phase. And then uh, four more examples, how to make people suffer. Uh, if we had any problems in, in the transition between first and second pull and staying over the bar, power snatch with the pause on the knee level will cure this problem very fast and uh, the things that i like in person very much it's a deficit power snatch for people who don't want i insist don't want to extend in the power position it could be 50 60 percent of your best but the deficit power snatch will make you feel the first and second pull how long should it be and then to develop power to make the bar fly even higher and is a variation it could be deficit post power snatch on the knee level for example if people lose coordination during the pull and then deficit power snatch and classical example for a lot of uh, coaches it's a snatch high pull i will show it a little bit later in the video and then uh, power snatch so, so this is um my opinion that this is the most popular and workable power snatch variation complexes that we should use to develop our mastery. I know that especially in CrossFit people, if they will have a chance to choose between power snatch and squat snatch, they will definitely uh, choose the power snatch because it's easier. And what I saw a lot, especially in USA, when a uh, coach want people to do snatch they draw on the whiteboard pull squat snatch because when it's only snatch most crossfitters will do power snatch because they're too lazy to do good turnover and sit down okay now we have a few more minutes uh, i would like to speak about hang snatch variations and show you some videos beginners when we want more time under tension more focus on the uh, staying over the bar, the variation such as hang snatch above knee and below knee will be beneficial. And uh, this is important because what we know from the statistics of mistakes, that most mistakes that athletes do in the pool happens on the level above or below knees. That is why hang snatch complex with the focus on this will be beneficial and as more developed uh, variation it could be hang snatch above knee then below the knee then 
full squat snatch. And of course, number three, classical variation snatch plus a hang snatch from the different position, depending on our goal. It's a must have exercise in every weightlifting program. Also, I would like to show three more variation of the hang snatches, which became more popular now when elite athletes uh, post uh, their training on Instagram. And I would like to say that uh, these three exercises look very impressive, but I highly don't recommend to use them for beginning level athletes because it looks impressive, but the coordination and risk to do something incorrectly is very high. So first uh, one is a tempo snatch. Uh, Dmitro Chumak, Ukrainian weightlifter, uh, is here. So technically, it's a hang snatch with a uh, touch and go mode. And here we can see that athlete very fast moving bar down to the starting position. And then he very quickly uh, do transition from the eccentric mode to the concentric mode. And as I said, it looks very impressive. But what I saw from my practice that most beginners on the eccentric phase with the, such a high speed, they just lose coordination and, and it look, looks not only ugly, but uh, very dangerous. Example number two, it's a snatch high pull with a snatch touch and go mode. It's also look impressive and looks like an exercise that I want to do. But what we can see here, uh, the quality of uh, snatch high pull athletes staying over the bar, he uh, maintained vertical position and everything looks very beautiful. But also I would like to emphasize that, for example, for Dmitro Chumak, whose uh, snatch in training is over 180 kilos. He is working in this progression with the weight 110. And what I saw most in person, it was 130. So it's something around below 60 and up to 70% and not more. So it's mostly like coordinational and technical exercise, not but not the exercise for developing real strength. And we should keep it in mind. The last exercise that I love, but also we should be very careful with this exercise. It's a snatch pull till power position and then snatch, uh, classical snatch in a touch and go mode. This is me doing it. So here we do snatch pull till power position focusing on feet balance and good covering the bar and then combine this uh pull with a snatch and uh here is the focus to on the feeling of the balancing and staying over the bar in this exercise we should work on the our working percentages like from 70 and higher even up to 90 but also this type of complexes is very uh cool for the technical work here is my buddy alexi tarakti and uh, this is the way he warm ups usually so he can do uh, up to six reps like a snatch uh snatch pull till power position then snatch again and, and once again like a till power position and then snatch and when you will uh, do this progression up to three, five sets with the lightweight, you will be amazed how good will be your pull and snatch as well. I'm almost done and we are almost in time. So let's do some brief conclusion on my presentation today, only 20 minutes. So not too much to say, but anyway, regarding the first part of my presentation, I believe using lifting ratio of accessory exercises in general can be useful tool for testing and control of our athletes during all stages of preparation. I believe, and I agree with uh, this, that uh, science says us that uh, power and hang snatch and variation are the most effective training means. Of course, we can use a lot of different exercises on the different stages of development, but power and hang snatches is always, always must have. And the last one regarding the uh, rivalry level on the world competition and uh, regarding that uh, anti-doping rules are always uh, toughening and that's it's not the best way to grow a result i believe that all coaches and athletes need constantly to develop skills uh, learn and be more smart to make weightlifting better 
I also warmly invite everyone to visit our website. We have a lot of useful materials here, articles uh, about different aspects of training. Also, please join our social media where we share information about Olympic weightlifting. I believe it's uh, very interesting and useful. If you have any question, you can ask it now. And also, I'm always open for communication in the social media. So thank you for your attention, people.